Hi, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to Palm Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in and peace and blessings be upon you and your family this afternoon. Now we are going to get right back into the great African American women. Right now we're on Nanny, Helen Burroughs. Wait a second, because it sounds, it seems to me that I did Nanny already. I had a, a grandma, we called her Nanny. <laughs> so, we are not on Nanny, because we've already did Nanny, Helen Burroughs. Right now, we're on Eunice, Hunter, Carter. New York's her first black woman district attorney. She was born 1899 to 1970. And it goes like this. Now, Eunice Hunton Carter was one of the most important black lawyers and community leaders of her time. She maintained a successful law practice for many years and held high leadership positions within the National Council of Negro Women and Young Women's Christian Association. Carter is best remembered, however, for being the first female African-American district attorney in the state of New York. She was born Eunice Hunton in Atlanta, Georgia on July 16th, 1899. The third of four children of William Alpheus Hunton and Addie Waits Hunton. Only she and her younger brother, William, survived infancy. After the 1906 race riots in Atlanta, the family moved to Brooklyn, New York. Her father was a pioneer in establishing Young's Men's Christian Association, YMCA, serving for blacks while her mother was a teacher and a leader of the Young Women's Christian Association, YWCA. During World War I, Addie Hunton volunteered through the YMCA to help American soldiers in Europe. Eunice Hunton, Jean Blackwell Hudson, wrote in Notable American Women, learned from her parents a commitment to public service that marked her career. In 1917, Eunice enrolled at Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts, where she received both an A.B. degree and an A.M. degree in 1921. For the next 11 years, she worked with various family service agencies. In 1924, she married Lyles, or Lyles, L-I-S-L-E Carter, a New York City dentist. They had one child, a boy named after his father. Although her unusual talents had swiftly brought her recognition in the social work field, according to Jean Blackwell Hudson, Eunice Carter's religious beliefs, she was a devout Episcopalian, and her commitment to the improvement of society led her to want a more active and public life. She began taking night classes in law at Fordham University in 1927. She received her LLB degree in 1932 and two years later opened a private law practice in New York City. Deputy Assistant District Attorney Following the Harlem riots in the spring of 1955, New York City Mayor Fiorella La Garidia appointed Eunice Hunton Carter Secretary of the Committee of Conditions in Harlem. In August of that year, Special Prosecutor Thomas E. Dewey named her as the only woman and the only black on his 
10 person staff investigate investigating excuse me organized crime in New York City Dewey had a special interest in the rackets of Harlem and area of the city that Carter knew especially well because of her early work on the Committee of Conditions in Harlem. Carter's work on theories about organized crime wrote Wendy Brown in Black Women in America, triggered the biggest organized crime prosecution in the nation's history in New York City in the late 1930s. It was Carter who developed the principal evidence in the case against Lucky Luciano. After Dewey became district attorney for New York County in late 1935, he named Carter deputy assistant district attorney. The first black woman to hold a district attorney's position anywhere in the state of New York. She built a distinguished record as a trial prosecutor over the next 10 years until she returned to private practice in 1945. Carter played a prominent role in Republican politics for many years. She strongly supported the political campaigns of her old boss Thomas E. Dewey and of Nelson Rockefeller. Woman's Right Activist. Besides engaging in politics to achieve her social goals, Carter became involved in women's organizations. A charter member of the National Council of Negro Women, the NCNW. She served the organization as legal advisor, chairperson of the Board of Trustees, representative at the founding Conference of the United Nations. UN in 1945, and observer at the UN till 1952. In 1947, she acted as a consultant to the Economic and Social Council of the UN for the International Council of Women and chaired its Committee of Laws. Following her parents' example, Carter also devoted much of her energy to the YWCA. She was active in the Upper Manhattan, Harlem, branch of the YWCA and served on the organization's national board as a member of the Administrative Committee for the Foreign Division. As a co-chair of the committee to develop leadership in other countries. Carter retired from her law practice in 1952, but remained active with the NCNW and other organizations. In 1954, the German government invited her to serve as an advisor to women in public life. At a 1955 UN conference in Geneva, she gained the International Conference of non-governmental organizations. After being widowed in 1963, she continued to live in New York City until her death on January 25, 1970. Eunice Hunton Carter contributed much to advancing the status of African American women through her commitment to public service as a social worker, lawyer, political activist, and internationally renowned women's rights advocate. In her most memorable role, that of successful trial prosecutor, in the toughest sections of New York City, she broke new ground for black women, a groundbreaker. Hmm. She broke ground. And usually when you break the ground, you, you're planting something. Broke ground for, for the seeds. 
that does complete Eunice Hunton Carter, the New York's first black woman district attorney. Now, certainly, if you would like to uh, hear the rest of the uh, great African-American women, I do have this on the playlist entitled Great African-American Women, where you will be able to go to the playlist and listen to uh, other women that I've previously done here on Poem Praise 2, and which we'll uh, continue to do for our great African American women. Certainly, if, if you need the women or you're doing a report and you can actually listen to different women and acquire knowledge from them, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, power, and certainly for the elevation, for the groundbreaking elevation. And uh, that does complete this take here on Poem Praise 2 of this reading. I want for you and your family to have a blessed rest of this day. And certainly may peace and blessings be upon you and your family. Okay? So be well. Uh, take care. And until next time, later y'all.